comics. Hot damn, are comics coming back? We've been in a little bit of a lull, but this list is so refreshing. Almost half of the books on this list are affected by stuff that came out this very week. If you're not going to your LCS, you're missing out, guys. You're also missing out by not hitting the like button. If you hit that like button, a whole bunch of really cool stuff happens, and the only way to find out what that cool stuff is, if you, you, you just gotta hit it. Just give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, we're here every single week, and we've been doing this for almost six years straight without skipping a beat, covering the most trending, hottest comic books in the world, and Dare I say, I think Trish Forstner and Tony Fleece did it again at the list at number 10. We have the Feral number one ash can, and this was a one per store. Or was it? This is another one of those promotional comics that depending on where your shop orders from, you may very well have gotten one from Lunar and one from Diamond, but that does not stop the fact that these are selling for $40 average and we saw a high raw sale for $69.99. Stray Dogs was an absolute hit when it came out and this is no surprise that Pharaohs is following suit. I think it's probably pretty easy to draw a line from stray dogs to not only feral today, but also beneath the trees where nobody sees and the upcoming man's best by our good friend Porn Sack Pichet Show. There's a there's a kind of a resurgence of anthropomorphic animal comic mm -hmm. books right now, and this one is on deck. It's coming out in just a few weeks. Feral looks really, really cool. It's like a bunch of kitty cats who escape into a world where uh, I guess everyone's got rabies. Right? There's like cat zombies or something. I'm looking forward to it. I'm kind of trying to go in a little a little hazy and not knowing 100% what's going to happen. But if it's anything like Stray Dogs, I think we're in for a good time. The Walking Dead, but with cats is how it's being described. And you know what's going to be very cute, but it's also going to be very disturbing. And there's a ton of great variants coming out, as you would expect, because that's what they did with Stray Dogs. Just mo horror movie homages after horror movie homage, and it's going to make you want to get all of them. The Dawn of the Dead homage variant is open to order. The Day of the Dead variant is a 1 in 50. And then, of course, you have the Night of the Living Dead, 1 in 100. Keep an eye out for that one. And shout out to our good friends over at Trinity Comics who teamed up with Zoe Lakay to release a Something is Killing the Children 1 homage. We're just going to keep going. Uh, the next book on this list is also brand new. This just came out. This is Spawn 350. That's a big anniversary issue. This, however, is the one per store signed by Todd McFarlane variant that came out a little after issue 350. Uh, we're seeing $350 average sales for this book, coincidentally, with a high raw sale approaching $600. There are multiple sales in that $550 to $600 range, and I believe rightfully so. Everyone loves Todd McFarlane, and a lot of people are looking for these. They have really done a fantastic job of making sure that this one per store is absolutely a one per store. With Feral and with some of these other one per stores, you can kind of double dip if you're ordering from Diamond and from Lunar. They really cracked down on this one. You had to order 25 copies of Spawn number 350 in order to be eligible to get this one per store variant. If you happen to order 25 from Diamond and 25 for Lunar, you got a little nasty gram saying, hey, don't double dip. You're still only getting one one per store, which means this is going to be a substantially lower print run because I think people thought they were going to get more of them. Make sure to download the best comic app in existence. It's where we source all of this data from every single week and you'll get so savvy on the hunt with convention season having officially started with Megacon we're gearing up for C2E2 utilize code Tom 101 on key collector comics available for both Androids and iPhones catalog your comics learn about all major keys and get suggested pricing and so much more looking at the list at number 8 Peach Momoko did it again the ultimate universe is banging and it's showing it here with ultimate X-Men number 1 coming out the gate strong double cover price $10 average sales on a book that just came out. And I hear you can't find it anywhere. If you were not at your shop first thing Wednesday, you probably missed out. We were sold out eight minutes after opening. Not only are these books selling well, we're seeing pre-sales of this comic book hit $130 for his CGC 9.8 because people are clearly specking on Ultimate Universe, but also Peach Momoko. If you're a fan of Demon Days, you're going to get a very similar vibe. And it doesn't even matter if you're not a big X-Men reader because this doesn't feel like an X-Men book. And don't forget, Peach Momoko, although she is all over the place doing so many amazing variant covers and a lot of very beautiful covers, 
She is a horror artist at heart, and she's flexing it in this book. As somebody who is not an X-Men reader myself, this book worked for me because it doesn't feel like an X-Men book. There's not a big team. There's no Wolverine or Cyclops or Xavier or Sentinels or anything like that. It's You just... follow like one of the lesser known mutants armor throughout the whole thing, and it's really just a couple characters. Yeah. What Tom said, it's very small scale. It doesn't feel like a big bloated X-Men comic, which is why I like it. And this was the last of the three original Ultimate titles that was announced when they restarted this whole universe. So we're kind of getting into uncharted territory here, but I think we're three for three with these Ultimate books now between Spider-Man, Black Panther, and now X-Men. It's just a good time, and it's really exciting to see Marvel specifically putting out good books again. Peach isn't just a stellar cover artist, and she's proving it in the pages of this book. The watercolors are just so mesmerizing, and it's almost simple, but it's intentional. You have to check out this comic book. And let's take a look at—is this right? Number seven on the list is <laughs> New Mutants. 100? What's going on? This book is hitting $4 average sales, $100 on the high end for a 9.8. That may sound strange, but for this book, that doesn't feel that off. Calling this a $4 book feels a little bit disrespectful, but the print run was so high, and there's a second print, and there's a third print, but really, the New Mutants run wrapped up with all of the fantastic Rob Liefeld stuff, and then they went off and had the X-Force comic book. But why are we seeing it on the list this week? This is the first appearance of X-Force, and we are seeing a 178% increase in copies sold of this book compared to last week because director Jeff Wadlow, who directed Kick-Ass 2, revealed that he was on deck to make an X-Force movie back in the day before the original Deadpool film came out. It was going to be a lot closer to the events of this comic book versus kind of the X-Force jokey parody version that we got in Deadpool 2. Knowing that it was a possibility has reminded people to look at this book, to consider the book, and it's an anniversary issue, and it's tough to get in high grid because it's thicker on not the greatest paper. So that's why you see these low averages, because this book is traditionally not found in 9.8 grade unless you pay for that slab, which is why it's a little bit inflated. Keep an eye out for it around the $50 to $80 marker if you want to get yourself a good deal. And now we can look at number six on the list. Kind of a warning, but also one of the best Superman books of all time. So to each their own, All-Star Superman number one. This book is hitting $8 averages and 125 for a CGC 9.8 because we know there's a Superman movie in production. They are actively creating it. And James Gunn is at the lead of this. And he keeps citing this book. And not only is he citing it, he's giving it to all the actors and they're citing it for inspiration for their characters. In particular, Lex Luthor. We have a 200% increase in copies sold of this modern classic book because uh, actor Nicholas Holt, who is playing Lex Luthor in Superman, just just Superman now, I got to stop calling it Superman Legacy. He was just on the Inside of You podcast, which is actually hosted by Lex Luthor actor Michael Rosenbaum from back in Smallville. They had a little Luthor off and uh, Nicholas Holt mentioned offhand that uh, he was inspired by a line from All-Star Superman referring to Lex Luthor's jacked up buff physique. So he is working out and getting uh, getting ripped for the role. James Gunn was even asked, other than the Superman films from the 1970s, what other things were inspirations for this movie? And he posted a bunch of pictures, one of them specifically being the jumper scene that's very famous that everyone should know from this very comic book. Number five on the list, we keep seeing this character, all new Wolverine number one. From 2016, we're seeing $30 average sales and a high 9.8 for $110. This is the debut of X-23 in the classic Wolverine costume. It's a 236% increase in copies sold this week. We've been hearing rumors about Daphne Keene reprising her role as Laura Kinney, X-23, for years now, but a lot more as of late because of the alt versions of Wolverine that we may see in Deadpool 3. And this last week was the seven-year anniversary of Logan, which was an amazing film. And I got to watch that again. I've seen it multiple times. And you should too. And because of the seven-year anniversary, I'm assuming she's reposting shots from that movie. Or she's doing the only hype she can because she's actually going to be in Deadpool 3. It's been a little over two months since we talked about this book last, and in that span of time, there have been 40 new 9.8s added to the CGC census, which tells me that people not only like this character and are investing in her, but they are sending their copies off to get graded and potentially flip in the lead-up to this movie. 
You heard that right. We are the only show covering and tracking the census count month over month on every book that we talk about. Hit the like button. And next on the list at number four, it's because of solicitations. That's how good comics are getting that books that aren't even coming out for months are still spiking books and making them trending. This is what we call a repeat offender. Wolverine number 36. This book is not even a year old. Came out last year. We last saw it on the trending list just three weeks ago. Since then, there have been 49 new slabs added in just a few weeks, which is impressive in and of itself. Uh, we're seeing a 132% increase in copies sold week over week, but there's no reason. This is just an upcoming comic book that people are excited for. His first appearance of the Helverine was in issue 36 of Wolverine, and now we are getting Helverine number one coming out in a few months. Well, it's a repeat offender at basically the same price as we saw last time. We're still seeing about $50 raw, and we're seeing $185 for a CGC 9.8, which is down about $10 or $15 from the high. But that makes sense because we have 43 new 9.8 slabs available. It just makes sense. But guys, Helverine number one is coming out at the end of May. So you got to go to your LCS, add it to your pull box. This is one character you do not want to miss. 43 new slabs in three weeks. Hot damn. Next on the list at number three. Before we get there, support the show directly by joining the mystery mail call. It's a great excuse for us to send you comics every single month. And each member gets two amazing books. One of them is a foil. That's true. The foil Tom's talking about is a foil done by Raf Grizzetti, one of our favorite artists. It's a foil Venom book, and it is spooky looking. The, the red foil is great. The black Venom looks really good, offsets the foil perfectly. But we got another one, too. And if you don't like scary, but you really want some cute, you should pick up this Chrissy Zulo variant of Edge of Spider-Verse number one, also available one per box. It's also the first appearance of Weapon 8, by the way. Glad that lined up. Number three on the list is more Grant Morrison. I mean, we have new X-Men 114, first appearance of Cassandra Nova. This book is hitting $18 average sales, 160 for a CGC 9.8 because of... Deadpool spec for sure. I mean, it's seemingly confirmed that Emma Corrin is going to portray this I call her sibling of Professor X in this movie. But also, I want to point out that this was the villain in the X-Men animated comics, which we have no confirmation is actually canon. That's a, that's a little bit of a deep cut, but... It's been almost a decade. It was in the Secret Wars. It was a Secret Wars tie-in. There was an X-Men 92 which uh, sounds familiar. It's not X-Men 97. X-Men 92 is a comic book that is basically the comic book version of the upcoming animated show on Disney+, Plus, where they follow what happens after the end of the animated series. And in that comic book, Cassandra Nova was one of the villains in there. So, theoretically, we could see a reprisal of that character, the animated version in the X-Men 97 animated show, depending on how continuity or canon the original x-men 92 comic book was and now you can just probably forget all of that information because i'm sure none of it is going to matter this is a 193 percent increase in copies sold this week and this book at 160 dollars for a 9.8 is half of what the record high was for 370 dollars back in march of 2023 we also have to keep in mind that the last time we were talking about this series was when we had the first appearance of negasonic teenage warhead which showed up in the deadpool movies as well so someone out there does like grant morrison and keeps wanted to push this run. This is a great example of a book that makes me feel refreshed coming to this table today because this list is filled with books that, yeah, are being specced on, but they're awesome key books and they're so affordable that they seem so low risk. I'm just excited to see Grant Morrison's comics getting so much love between the inspiration for Deadpool 3 here. Uh, Grant Morrison's All-Star Superman is clearly inspiring James Gunn for his Superman film. And then we've got Grant Morrison's Batman run kind of inspiring Chip Zdarsky to do all sorts of crazy stuff right now in his current Batman comic. So it's, it's kind of the age of Grant right now. I'm into it. Which brings us to the next comic on the list, which is here because of a recent release of what I now think is my favorite Marvel comic book to be released in 2024. We have the very first time Peter and Miles team up. We have Spider-Man number one. I want to come in here and clean up some stuff Tom just said. We're specifically talking about Spider-Man number one from 2012. This is Brian Michael Bendis. This is Sarah Pacelli. This is like classic early Miles stuff. This is not the book that just came out this week, which is what Tom is so giddy and excited about. We are seeing a 567% increase in copies sold of Spider-Man number one from 2012. Because people are excited about these characters teaming up. This week was the first ever ongoing title with uh, both Peter and Miles in it at the same time, which is kind of cool and uh, honestly a little surprising that we haven't gotten that before now. We have Gargoyle's writer, 
Kanan, the last Padawan writer. We have the creator of Young Justice and the writer of Spectacular Spider-Man, the animated series, which was superb and only got canceled because of the acquisition by Disney of Marvel. Not to mention Umberto Ramos on the interiors. Greg Weissman is absolutely killing it with Spider-Man number one, and every single person needs to read this spectacular spider book. I'm going to be honest and say I skipped this one. I'm a little burnt out on Spider-Man books. And if you're like me and Amazing Spider-Man is kind of letting you down, uh, obviously be uh, be reading Ultimate Spider-Man. That's been a lot of fun right now. But I am going to track down Spectacular Spider-Men and pick that up, too, because Tom says it's the best thing he's ever read in his entire life, more or less. I won't go that far, Ryan, but I will say I am very excited with issue number one because Peter and Miles are going to do something different. They're going to team up every single week for coffee and lunch. They're going to hang out. We get to know each other. I mean, you got the Manhattan Spider-Man and the Brooklyn Spider-Man never really crossing paths. And they're trying to, you know, rekindle their friendship and cause a ruckus on the streets and save people. You got to check this book out. Are you guys appropriately situated with your popcorn bucket? Make sure you hit that like and slap that subscribe button. Which brings us to the number one hottest trending book in the world. And it's because of a movie that I'm going to see tonight and I'm so excited. We have Dune. Number one leading the list, which is based off the David Lynch 1984 film. And I find it curious that throughout all the Dune hype, that there's no love for the Boom series that came out. People still navigate to the first comic book anything that has really nothing to do with the current franchise. It just feels really weird for the three of us to be sitting at this table and for Tom to be the one that talks about David Lynch. Like, <laughs> that doesn't feel right. I don't. We can't do that. I still haven't seen the David Lynch Dune movie. I've heard nothing but horrible things about it and that it's uh, just not good. You have Kyle McLaughlin. You have Sting from The Police. You've got a young Patrick Stewart who still has a little bit of hair. David Lynch hated this movie so much that he actually released it under the director name Alan Smithy, which is what an old named, it was just kind of a nod of the hat to, I want to disown this movie and don't even want people to know that David Lynch did it. Really, it's so bad, it's good, it's worth seeing. I mean, the sci-fi had a television series of Dune that was actually worth watching as well. I really enjoyed that. I just haven't been into the new movies. I got to hear from the community in the comment section below, but keep the spoiler talk to a minimum because I want to go enjoy this movie. It's an increase of copy sold to 433% because the hype is real. People are saying they love it, and I want to know your thoughts. I appreciate your time today. As always, geek responsibly. Enough said. <laughs>